for a game that's been out for 22 years now within a franchise that I love, I've never completed Final Fantasy VII. Saying that, I've never even completed Disc 1. So that's how I've decided that I would be the best person to create this trophy overview if you're going to play Final Fantasy VII. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the trophy overview for the game, how difficult it was, um, how long it took me, and an in-depth look on what you need to do to work towards completing every single trophy in this game. So in Final Fantasy VII, you can expect a pretty long JRPG story that's going to take you probably anywhere from 20 hours to 40 hours, um, depending if you're going to be using the built-in cheats that came with the PS4 remaster, which is what I played on. Uh, whilst you're going to get through a very convoluted story, in my opinion, especially towards the end of the game, uh, you have to be mindful of at least the eight missable trophies. Uh, you have to be grinding out for max level, 99 gil, and then you're going to be working towards defeating a few super bosses and then finally getting level 4 limit breaks for every single person. So from the get-go, you have to really focus on what answers you choose in certain dialogues. And this is to ensure that you get that cute little date with our big boy Barrett. It's highly recommended to use a guide for this, um, because Ares and Tifa will start off heavily favoured for the date in Gold Saucer. So once we're a few hours into the game, we're going to get our first missable trophy, which is the uh, Consummate Crossdresser. Um, you're basically going to be running around the town, completing certain tasks, um, doing like mini little quests, I guess. And that will get you little pieces of clothing for Cloud. As we continue to work through our Disc 1 playthrough, um, we need to keep in mind spoilers, that Ares dies. So there is a trophy to get her level 4 limit. And so we have to make sure that we kill enough monsters with her. And then we work towards the mini quest to get the Mithril item. And then deliver that to the weaponsmith in the house. So now that we've got that in mind, we know what to do with Ares. We want to start working on our two other missable trophies. And that's going to be the two collectible characters. So uh, after the first few hours, we're going to get out into the world map. And you're going to come across a large forest. This is where we're going to come across Yuffie. It may take a battle or two, um, but you should get her sooner or later. All you have to do is just beat her. Make sure you answer her dialogue questions correctly. And then as you walk off, Yuffie will um, run across you, making sure that she be gets brought along on the search for her materia. So Yuffie's done. That's one of our two. So you're going to return back to Nibelheim, I think it's pronounced. Let me know in the comments if that's correct. But we're going to go back to Nibelheim. Uh, you'll be interacting with Clone Sephiroth. We'll complete this, the story portion of the mansion. And then once we're ready, you're going to head downstairs, and then that's where we will find Vincent. Um, so Vincent is in a coffin, kind of like a vampire. Um, you're going to go through a lot of dialogue options, and you do have to get these correct as well. So you're going to get certain um, options while you're chatting with him. Make sure they're correct. As you walk off, like Yuffie, he'll run after you, he'll want to join your party. And then this opens us up to getting his limit level 4 as well. If you choose the incorrect options... Then there is a chance that you'll miss him. Same goes for Yuffie. Alright, so with that in mind, you're thinking about Ares. You've got your two characters. And then you're also working on Barrett's dialogues. So the only last two missable trophies is going to be before Bahamut and then Bahamut Zero. Bahamut's very easy. It's very hard to miss. Materials on the floor um, towards the end of the disc. So just make sure you look out for that. And then Bahamut Zero, that's going to require you to get the four large materials. But you won't really start working on this towards or until towards the end of this two towards the start of this three and now we're on to the final point i want to make on this trophy guide so this leaves us with really just the super bosses known as weapons so ruby weapon um emerald weapon all of those so i'll admit uh, after the grinding and worrying about all the missable trophies this is pretty easy uh, emerald weapon super easy with the cheats um just make sure you're a high level you've got omni slash uh, you've got some of the better weapons and just go in there and just one shot him no big deal uh ruby weapon on the other hand is a very hard boss but it does require just some preparation so there's a lot of youtube guides out there on how to beat him um a lot of things i didn't have that they did that i really wasn't about and by this point i just wanted the game to be over so all i did was uh once you kill emerald weapon you go get your master summoner you'll get knights of the round table early and then just use that eight times on Ruby to make sure you get the win. Um, the only thing I would recommend is making sure that your party is dead at the start of that fight. Or else he'll start doing his little cheesy shit. And that will make a lot more things complicated 
that it needs to be. So if you got this far, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more overviews and tips for more platinum trophies. And let me know in the comments what game you think I should tackle next. Until next time, bye.